we recently took our first airplane trip with our infant daughter, and we wanted to make a video that might help out parents who are considering taking a trip with their little one. We searched for videos to help us prepare and realize that there wasn't anything out there that talked about the first travel experience with an infant. In this video, we're going to talk about what we brought on the plane, getting to the airport and through security, what to do in the airport, takeoff and landing, public transportation at your destination, stroller must-haves, and staying at a hotel with the baby. We wanted our first plane trip with our baby to not be very far from home, so we flew from LA to Seattle. It's about a two and a half hour flight, and it actually took less time. It actually only took just over two hours to get there. So it was a great first time flight opportunity with our little one. First things first, this is what we took on the plane. We took our stroller, which we packed into a travel bag, two carry-on suitcases, one for each of us with all of our personal clothes and belongings, diapers and changing materials for the plane. We brought a small changing pad, eight diapers in a Ziploc bag, because we planned on buying diapers there, wet wipes and cleaning wipes for the airplane seats once we got seated, and a couple extra sets of clothes. We made sure to bring a couple extra burp cloths just in case. We also brought some of our baby's favorite things like her favorite bee book and her rattle. So make sure you bring two to three toys and ideally they're ones that can be washable by hand because sure enough, something will end up dropping on the floor somewhere on the plane or throughout your trip. We packed just about all of this in the backpack and in a second bag, we also had a blanket, a carrier and a wrap. It was really helpful to get dropped off at the parking garage in the airport. So if you can get a friend to drop you off and pull up into the parking garage, it just gives you some extra time to get ready. Um, maybe get in a last nursing session before you really get all of your things out and start walking into the terminal. Right, again, and this is first time traveling parents here. Of course, at some point, we're going to be able to just take it all out and do it right there at the curb. But just to give yourself some peace of mind and not be rushing, it was nice to be able to park and get ready. Now, when you're going through the TSA security checkpoint, you really want to make sure that you don't leave anything in your stroller because it might get flagged as they are screening it. You'll take your shoes off in a bin and one person will carry the baby through the metal detector. Definitely want to have your ID and boarding pass ready or accessible in a pocket that you can get to really fast. I would recommend that the person who has the baby to not have a computer or an iPad with you because you will have to take that out of your bag and it's just one extra thing you'll be concerned about tracking down and all you want to do is focus on your baby and not have to grab extra things off of the conveyor belt. All right, so you've made it through the hard part. You got through security and now you're home free. So when you get to your gate, you wanna just make sure, of course, that you're in a nice comfortable spot. You have enough room for maybe your, your stroller and you know somewhere that you're just comfortable uh, with your baby and your partner, you know, some room to nurse. And then an advantage to being close to the gate is you can go ahead and get that gate check tag for your stroller right away. So if you go see the sky cap, they'll give you that gate check right away and you'll be set to go as soon as they start boarding. One of the advantages to having a young child when you are flying is that you do get priority boarding. So you always hear them calling families with young children. So you get the opportunity to get on the plane first. Now that might seem like a big bonus, but imagine sitting on the plane that's at the gate with a young child for however long it takes them to board. Here's a great tip. If you're traveling with two adults, have your partner who doesn't have the baby get on the plane first and get everything set up. That person can bring on both of the bags and the stroller and really set up the area while the other partner who has the baby can do a last feeding, a final change before they get on the plane. And that's gonna cut down a lot of the wait time while that plane is just sitting at the gate before you take off. What we did was the person who had the bags scanned their boarding pass and the person who had the baby 
sort of delayed and said, you know what, I think I should change uh, my baby before we board. And we left the line because typically they're going to want the whole family to board together. But like we mentioned before, it may be a long time for the baby to be waiting while the entire plane boards. So that way I was able to change our baby and just hang out for the next 20 minutes while everyone boarded and waited till the line ended. All right, let's talk about feeding. So you're going to want to feed your baby during takeoff so that their ears can adjust to the pressure. Sometimes planes are delayed, so you might not be able to time this up perfectly. Our baby was really ready to eat and fall asleep and we did our best to lengthen that, but we ended up just needing to feed her as we were waiting for the, the rest of the luggage to be put on the plane. So if this happens, just go ahead and feed your baby. You don't want to be that person who's got the screaming, crying baby, but you know, if it happens, it happens. And if they happen to fall asleep, then go ahead and wake them up at takeoff and, and feed them when you can. But that's really important that you feed them during takeoff and landing so that their ears can pop. When it's time to change your baby during the flight, find the lavatory that has a changing table. Not all of them have changing tables. The lavatory door will tell you which one has it, and also the flight attendants are very nice and will point you in the right direction. I know it's really fun to look out the window. We had some great sights coming into Seattle. Don't forget to feed your baby when you land. And once you land, you finally made it. If you plan on taking public transportation out of the airport at your destination, you definitely want to check your route before you leave the airport in case you need Wi-Fi or a charge. Don't forget to sanitize after touching public machines. Don't be afraid to grab a snack in the airport or pick something up to eat that's close and easy if you all are starting to get hungry. It could be a little while until you get your first meal and you might have a long ride ahead of you. I guess this next tip is more useful when you're thinking about booking up all of your travel details. We do frequently stay in Airbnbs, however, the availability of a crib is not as known in some of those stays. You could try to message back and forth with the host, but we decided to go with a hotel this time. Almost all hotels will have cribs available for guests. They will most likely be pack and play cribs. One thing that gave me peace of mind when planning the hotel stay was I actually called the hotel in advance to confirm that they had a crib and I asked which brand it was in case I wanted to look up any details about the pack and play crib. We had a standard size hotel room with a king bed and plenty of space for the crib. We moved some things around and placed the crib here. Don't be afraid to move some of the furniture to get the crib in the best spot for you and your baby. Don't be surprised if your baby is done for the day when you arrive at wherever you're staying. Try not to schedule any big itinerary items because they just might need a really good reset and to go to bed or have some extra cuddles with you. Having a consistent nap time routine might be difficult when you're traveling with an infant, which is why most of our baby's naps were on the go in her carrier, which she naps really well in. Keeping the same bedtime routine as what it is at home is going to be really important. Predictable schedules are best for babies. So if you do bath time at a certain time, make sure you do that. If you read a book, if you play a certain song, if you dim the lights, try to do all of those things and your baby should be able to sleep just fine at night. If you're planning on taking a bus with your stroller, make sure that you get on with the stroller folded. If there's no one really on the bus, the driver might let you park it up in the front, but our bus driver asked us to move it to a seat because those front seats are designated for persons with disabilities or the elderly. So just be prepared to tuck your stroller away in a bus seat. We definitely love walking with our baby while she's in one of the carriers. However, if you plan to be out for a while, it might be a good idea to go ahead and bring the stroller. We love using this stroller cover 
because it keeps the sun out of our baby's face. And once they start to get a little sleepy, it gives them a dark environment and helps them fall asleep for their naps. We forgot to mention, if you happen to have a waterproof picnic blanket, it may come in handy depending on where you're traveling to. Here in Seattle, it protected us from wet grass as we watched seaplanes land and take off at Gasworks Park. If your baby's able to take naps on the go, definitely take advantage of some of the local sites. We decided to go to Fremont Brewing Company right after Gasworks Park, and it was a great stop in the middle of our day. If you're using public transportation to get back to the airport, you can probably go ahead and fold up and pack up your stroller on the way back. We found it was much easier to pack it up in the travel bag than to push the stroller around during our commute. And once we got to the airport, then we took out the stroller. We want to assure you not to be afraid to travel with your infant. Really, this time is probably one of the easiest times you will have traveling with your baby. In a year or two, it will be much more difficult. Right now, generally, all they do is eat and sleep, which is why we were able to do so many things, walking around with her in a carrier as she napped. Those are all the tips we have for you this time. Thanks for watching our video. We hope it helps you on your first trip with your baby. Good luck.